Hi, I'm Jen Dixon, artist and art educator, and today I want to show you a really easy technique for getting an accurate preliminary drawing down before you begin painting. For this tutorial, I'll be using a pencil, but you could use charcoal if that's what you prefer. I'll be painting onto a canvas-like paper and using acrylic paint. To better demonstrate the technique, I'll also be using a sheet of clear plastic and a dry erase marker. These aren't things that you're going to need for this. However, I find them useful for all sorts of purposes in my studio. The photo reference I'm using is one I took of some strawberries, but you can use any reference you want. I suggest it's of a simple grouping of objects like a mini still life. The first thing I do is I look at how to separate the groups of objects in my reference. In this case, I will focus on the strawberries, but not the shadows. The shadows can become a separate grouping of objects after I get the strawberries figured out. The drawing technique we're using is something I used to teach in life drawing classes, and it works with any subject, whether you're drawing from life or from a photograph. The key is that we're not looking at the individual strawberries, but rather them as a whole. It can be really difficult if you wanted to try to get a strawberry right, and then try to get the next strawberry right, and then try to get the next, and it, you're just bolting them on together and hoping for the best. But with this technique, which is called enveloping or enveloping, however you want to pronounce it, we are literally drawing an invisible line, an envelope around there. There's a third pronunciation ridiculous. Anyway, <laughs> there's an envelope that is literally an invisible line around the grouping. So we're going to look at the shape of that. So if I were to connect a line from here to here, I might look at the angle and I might just start with a line that goes from there to there, an approximate length. I mean, we can, we can change all this as we go. So we're just looking at now I'm doing this to this. I might chop off the leaves just a little bit and chop off the stem because those are sort of external details that I can always do later. And let's see, then we've got something coming down from this strawberry down to this one. There's this little strawberry in the dark, but I'm going to look at, okay, where this point terminates, where is it on my initial line so it's kind of kind of through there so that's good so i know that this one needs to be just that little bit longer so if i pop a line up to that shadowy strawberry and then here to here and then i've got oops that might be a little extreme so we'll go with that and then there's this line here. So that is my invisible line, my envelope, envelope, enveloping, enveloping, whatever, around my grouping. So that is the first step. Once we have that in place, we can begin to look at the negative space in between the strawberries. So this cutout that happens here and here. So there's this sort of triangular shape. So I know that, uh, let's see, if I go up and I think about where that might occur. Oops, that's not a deep enough angle. So this is where we get those angles correct. So I've got that chopped out there. And there's a cutout on this side. So if I pop that in, so I've got a cutout there. I've got a cutout at the bottom. So what I'm doing here is I'm continuing to 
draw the grouping without drawing the individual strawberries. And let's see, there's a wedge that can come out there. And if I want to be really particular, actually I don't like that angle. So this is, this is the time when you can tweak the drawing and tweak these angles. That's a little bit better. So as you tweak and, and you change any of, ang any of the angles you're not so certain about and you get in these negative spaces, you can begin to see where these strawberries are emerging in my grouping. Now at this point, you can also start to look at other groupings, like maybe you want to put in these shadows and knock out some of this negative space here. But I'm going to leave that alone for now. I'm most concerned about getting my strawberries right. And so I'm going to leave that as it is and start bashing in the first layer of paint. If you're new to acrylics or you're coming from watercolors, here is an important tip. Acrylic paint is so easy to use and can be thinned with a little bit of water. However, if you want to thin it a lot, use a medium so that you're not weakening the actual structure of the paint too much. Water pushes the pigment particles apart and dilutes the acrylic polymer that binds them. So using an airbrush medium or a matte medium like these, that's perfect for thinning while keeping the pigment in a stable binder. Think of a binder or medium like a glue that permanently holds the pigment particles down. Here I'm just beginning to knock in some basic shapes for the strawberries. I'm not worried about them being super accurate yet. In fact, I'm rarely ever consumed by super accuracy. I prefer a little bit looser approach. I think I'll use a round brush though. So you can see how my drawing has helped tremendously just by giving me those boundaries to my strawberries. You know, it's up to me to push the shapes into place, but this makes it a heck of a lot easier. Now some of this is hidden by leaves, so I'm just going to wing it a little bit. I'm not even mixing the paint right now. I'm just putting an initial layer on. That's the beauty of acrylics is you can add and add and add in layers until you get what you want. Right now I just want to show you the magic of that drawing technique for getting you started very quickly.
an interesting thing I've found is that my original drawing, I'm sort of, I've elongated it this way. I've made it just a little bit too wide, but my drawing has helped me to see where these shapes are and I can correct that as I go. That is a pretty good start for my strawberries painting. I'm just going to set this aside for a moment since it's wet and I'll take my plastic, lay it over my iPad. I apologize if there are any lamp glares from this but what I want to do is show you, this isn't flat, so it might glare a little bit. Apologies. So that is my envelope line. I'll smash in some of these bits of negative space. And my marker doesn't want to mark very well today. It's all right, marker. I feel you. There we go. So with that, you can just about see that shape. I pop it over my painting. You can see how fairly accurate that grouping is. I forgot the negative space up there, but you get the idea. And this technique is so good for getting that basic shape down, but not worrying too much about the individual items in that grouping. So you're not bogging yourself down with fear of accuracy. You're getting that overall shape, sticking in the negative, and then letting the rest of the detail emerge. So one thing that this technique does is it gets you really quickly to the painting stage. And that's really what we want to do, isn't it? I mean, we don't want to spend hours and hours on trying to get an accurate drawing down. We want to get to the fun stuff. So that's one reason to use this technique. It gets you to the fun stuff more quickly. You can keep building up your painting now and block in those colors. However, here's one that I started before, uh, and this one is still a work in progress, but you can see how going from the photo to the enveloping or enveloping and the negative space, and then starting to build up your layers in acrylic. So I still have quite a bit to do. You know, I need to bash in the shadows and the seeds and a little bit of the highlights, but you can see how you can very rapidly create a painting with accuracy using this drawing technique, this preliminary underdrawing technique. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that this tip helps you in your art practice to quickly and easily build that preliminary drawing for your painting. If you enjoyed learning with me, come find me at Skillshare. I have loads of classes on there and I would love to see you in them. And also, if you're on Instagram, find me at Jen Dixon Arts. I'll see you again soon and have a great day.